Hello guys, welcome to my channel Civilogy, the study of civil engineering. In this video, we are going to learn what is effective depth of a section. By section, we mean a slab or a beam. We will also discuss the effective cover and clear cover and how to calculate this effective depth, effective cover and clear cover. And in the end, we will discuss how important it is to determine. That is, what is the importance of determining effective depth. So, you are requested to watch complete video to better understanding of this topic. And if you are new to my channel, you are requested to please subscribe it. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates. So, let's start our today's topic. First of all, let us define what is effective depth of a section. Let's assume we have a beam and this is the cross section, typical cross section of the beam having total depth H. The total depth is represented by H and the tension steel is provided at the bottom of the steel and compression steel is provided at the top. And these combine these steels combinedly can be called as main bars okay or main reinforcement and then there is stirrups to hold the main reinforcement at its position and it also acts as shear reinforcement so what is effective depth effective depth of a beam or slab generally denoted by d it is the distance between the outermost compression fiber as we all know that the beam experiences compression at the top beam experiences compression at the top so this is the compression zone of the beam and it is the distance between the compression fiber to the center of tensile steel as you can see over here if this is the center of the tensile steel then this distance d is called as effective depth or it can also be called as the effective depth of the beam is the distance from the tension steel to the edge of the compression fiber. I hope you have understand what is effective depth. Now uh, understanding what is clear cover. Clear cover is also called as concrete cover and it is usually provided to protect the steel from heat and environmental effects like corrosion and rust etc. As you can see over here this is the clear cover and it is also called as concrete cover minimum value of a clear cover for slab and beam is 20 millimeters and it is provided on all four sides as you can see over here this distance is called as clear cover to protect the steel from environmental effects and it is provided on all four sides and it is equal on all four sides whereas effective cover is defined as the distance measured from the face of the member to the center area of the main reinforcement as i told you before that if this is the centroid if this line is passing through the centroid of the tension steel then the distance between the outer edge as you can see over here then the distance between the center of the tension steel and the outer face of the beam is called as effective cover and it is very crucial perimeter in the design and analysis of beams in structural engineering now coming towards the calculation of effective depth and effective cover let us assume we have a beam whose total depth is 400 meters h total depth is denoted by alphabet h and the stirrup dia is 8 millimeters the stirrup we are using over here having the diameter of 8 millimeters and tension steel dia is 20 millimeters okay and the clear cover is 20 millimeters as you can see over here this is the clear cover which is provided on all four sides and have the same value on all four sides okay and it is 20 millimeters so the d effective depth can be determined as the beam depth minus clear cover plus dia of stirrup 
and half of dia of tension steel as i mentioned before that this is the uh, this the effective depth is is from outer face towards the center of the tension steel so that's why we take half dia of tension steel that is up to the center of the tension steel so by putting values the total depth is 400 clear cover is 20 millimeters and dia of stirrup is 8 millimeter and then half of diameter of tension steel which is 20 millimeters so by simplifying we get d is equal to 362 millimeters which is the effective depth of the beam having total depth 400 millimeter okay now effective cover effective cover is equal to total depth minus effective depth as the total depth is 400 and effective depth is 362 millimeters so by simplifying we will get effective cover which is 38 millimeters so it's mean that effective cover is always greater than clear cover and effective cover is provided on the bottom bottom side and top side of the beam or slab whereas clear cover is provided on all of the four sides of the beam having same value okay now if we talk about the importance of determining effective depth the effective depth determines how efficiently a beam can withstand bending moments and distribute loads by positioning the reinforcement bars at an optimal depth engineers can ensure the beam strength and stability for construction professionals and civil engineers understanding the effective depth is essential for designing safe and structurally sound beams it is a key factor in determining the required amount and placement of reinforcement thus influencing the overall performance and load carrying capacity of the beam Calculating the effective depth involves considering factors such as the type of loading, desired strength and applicable design codes. Various design methods such as limit state design are employed to ensure the beam meets the necessary safety requirements. So that's all for today. In the end you are again requested. If you are new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates. That's all for today.